atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere of Jesus, for there's an atmosphere where nothing is impossible, no disease incurable, there's an atmosphere, there's an atmosphere when nothing is impossible and no thing that brings about provision jehovah shalom it is name that brings peace all of the names of god have rewards hallelujah so you cannot truly encounter the god of heaven and not have something reflect in your life in fact it's an error hallelujah it proves that you didn't meet him yeah. no no that you didn't meet it because you can't meet an all I mean how can you touch electricity and remain the same you know how can you touch electricity how can you touch fire and come out the same way it's impossible hallelujah so I believe on that night God is going to do wonders in our midst so come expectant amen amen come what expectant hallelujah so Today we are starting a new series um, called Understanding Purpose and Destiny. Hallelujah. Understanding Purpose and Destiny. This is a very important series. I will ask you to really follow through with the series because it's going to help to locate you in the plan of God. Hallelujah. It's going to help you discover God's purpose for your life and also see what destiny truly is. There is a difference between purpose and destiny. And I'm going to show that. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, Jeremiah 29 11. Jeremiah 29 11. The most important thing after being born again and receiving the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, right? The most important thing after that is to discover why God brought you to this earth. Amen? Discovering your purpose is the most important thing after you get born again. Because it's, I mean, the whole the whole terminology purpose is the reason for a thing so it's the reason why god brought you here on earth why you are the way you are why you look the way you are why you were born in the family that you were born in why do you have the gift things that you have why do you have the personality that you have right god changes our character not our personality our personality is unique to us so why did god give you the personality that you have why are you who you are hallelujah and the only one who can give you that answer is God himself. Hallelujah. If your parents are spiritual, they can also give you that because God reveals to parents the destiny of children. Hallelujah. And that's why if you are a parent, you must be the first person who knows the destiny of your child. Hallelujah. You, you notice throughout scripture, every time there, there were a number of figures before they came to the earth, God would tell their parents their destiny so that their parents would groom them according to destiny. Hallelujah. So it's very important as a parent that you get to know your child's destiny so that you don't bring them up in things that are necessary to their lives. Hallelujah. So uh, uh, outside of your, if your parents are spiritual, they can give you that. But the one person who can give you that is God himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God can show, he, he's that plan is with him and we're going to read right now it's with him and you must make it a pursuit or else life will never make sense Bazalwani, right jesus says these words he says life is not life does not consist in the abundance of things which a person possesses hallelujah meaning life is not about collecting and heaping up amen amen Life is not about collecting and heaping up. When you have collected everything, what then? When you've had the marriage, the things that uh, 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 you come to church for, right? There's nothing wrong to come to church trusting God for a husband, trusting God for a job, trusting God for a breakthrough. Nothing wrong with that because God can do that, right? But when every prayer has been answered, what then? You see, that's why the Bible says, Paul says, warn those who are rich in the world. He says, to be careful lest they pierce themselves with many sorrows. Many people have had abundance of material possession and ended up more worse than they were when they had nothing. Yeah. Hello? Did you notice, Hori, you know today, Honali, 
you know, there's the, there's the explosion of, of, of mental health, right? Like the, the new thing that's being dealt with today is what? Uh, mental health. And like when people want to cut you off, but you're not good for my mental health. <laughs> it's true, but there's a bit of an extremity with it, as is with everything, right? Um, your mental health is important. Amen. It is. You know, don't, don't get out of here and say, Apostle said our mental health is not. No, it is important, right? But there are things that we have now rubbed. We, we have now been comfortable with demons. Some of these things are spirits of anxiety and depression that we have allowed ourselves to camp with. You see, there is generally... Generally, there are people who are havoc to your life. Like every time they come to your life, there's always trouble, right? Those people keep away. But if you are always in a constant state where everybody's disturbing your mental health, you are the problem. Yeah, good is right? Yeah, so, and here's the thing. Here's what shocks me about the mental health move. Because it's a move. Why didn't our parents have it? There are people whom you need to remove for your mind. But this thing is like a new it in the social media. All of a sudden, mental health. Luana, you've never heard it, but because you are hearing this all the time, you've joined into the mental health thing. <laughs> you are good to see, right? The, 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 we, we, we must be careful because some of these things ne, is, is the spirit of depression right the spirit of depression at work in a generation you see that we must be careful there is there is there is stress right okay let's start there is worry right worry is 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 worry and anxiety is the same thing it's more or less the same thing you know it's like two sides of the same coin right there is worry and anxiety right then you have uh, uh, then you have stress. Stress is pressure. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen. Good one, isn't it? Yes, sir. Stress is what? Pressure. Right? For example, if you have a deadline, you are pressured. I don't care how long you pray. <laughs> Amen? If you have a deadline, you have pressure. And pre- pressure has no, pro- there's no problem with pressure. The problem is your reaction to it. Languages is on is how you respond to it, right? But st- so I would rather say let's leave let's let's leave uh, 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 what do you call this thing? Let's leave stress because stress is pressure, right? But here anxiety and worry, right? When you entertain this long enough, you slope into a place called depression, right? What is depression? It is when you are crippled by your own thoughts. It is when the, the external is overwhelming the internal. That's depression. But further than depression is the spirit of depression. When now, you, every time you, th- you try to think an opposite thought, it's impossible because there's a spirit sponsoring your thinking. Whenever you lose sight of, when, when you lose control of your thinking, a spirit is involved because man by nature can control his thoughts it's i mean it's one of the things that make us human so when you lose when you cannot control your thinking which means here's what i mean when i say control your thinking you know buddy birds can fly right but you allow them to nest yeah right they can fly over your head you can't stop them you you kick them away then they'll come back you kick them away they'll come back right when they nest, it's, it's you allow them, right? But now when they nest beyond your power and you cannot remove them anymore, now a spirit is involved. The Bible talks about a distressing spirit. It, it was a spirit of depression that had hit a certain king. It was not normal and that's why when David would play the harp, that spirit would leave. Amen. So, I am saying this, that I said this to, to, to say this, that if your life is just about accumulating and accolading, right? If your life is about 
material possessions. Now, I am not against material possessions. God knows we need money. Amen. Money is important. Look at your neighbor. Money is important. Yeah, money is important. No, say it with oomph. Say it. Say, it. say it. money is important. Right? Don't don't let it's a religious spirit that says money is not important. It's religion. The Bible itself says money answers for all. Money in the heavens is the same capacity as wisdom. Money. We gotta go deeper. No, the truth is, a lot of people don't have problems. They don't have problems. You, you, don't, you, you really pila pila when come when you don't have issues. You just have an empty bank account. If you want to fill your bank account with a million bucks right now, I you be the happiest person. <laughs> having, having money is healthy. Amen. Having money is what is healthy. Amen. Amen. Eh? Having money is what? Healthy. Yeah, there are sicknesses you will never know when you have money. You are good, right? Oh, yeah. There are things you don't experience. You are always in a great mood. Hallelujah. People who have money, they are in a great mood all the time. Because money allows you to execute what you think. If you want to go to Santin right now, boom, bam, boom, we're gone. Not let me check the account. Yeah. <laughs> this is all right. But money allows you, it gives freedom, it's liberty, right? That's why there's something called financial freedom, right? It is when you are able to walk into a store and choose what you want without asking for the price. Yeah. Yeah. Then you are really free. Hallelujah. May God bless you in that manner. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. May God bless you in such a manner that you don't need to ask for the price. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. When, you, when, when they say, do you know how much it is? You say, money is not a problem. Yes. Yes. Now we are done. I was not talking on money. <laughs> but you see how money cheers you up? Yeah. <laughs> it's a serious matter, right? Money answers. It's biblical. The Bible says money answers for all. Hallelujah. Some of the accidents that have happened on the highway is because people were financially pressured month end accidents increase not because of demons honestly it's not demons people are just worried about the bills things are not coming together so if people if more people had more money in their bank accounts people would be healthier amen with that being said if money is in your life all right so what ends up happening with money is that you will do this do this do this but you're going to get bored you're going to get exhausted and suddenly you will realize money is not everything that's where Solomon got to. He was depressed. He says, vanity, vanity, it's all vanity. I mean, he was the, the richest man. The Bible says he made silver become like a common thing. That's how rich Solomon was, right? But because he lost sight of purpose, money, not the same thing that blessed him now depressed him. So I'm saying this to you that yes, acquire finances, get rich, amen, and don't, don't die trying, amen. Hallelujah. Get rich. Get wealthy. God wants it for you. Amen. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Right? But the purpose of the money is to execute destiny. Yeah. Yeah, good this is, all right? Money is there in your life so that you can execute destiny and leave a legacy for those who are coming after you. Amen. Amen. Now we are dealing with purpose and destiny. Hallelujah. One, two, three, go. Can you give me the NIV? The NIV puts it better. And let's stay with the NIV for a while. Right? NIV. Are we winning? NIV. Uh -huh. Can we read this together? One, two, three, go. I know the plans that I have for you. Right? Important. Anything you have not written down is not a plan. Amen. Mm. Anything you desire to do that you have not written down is not a plan. It's a wish. Amen. It's a dream. But it's not a plan. It becomes a plan when you put pen to paper. 
Yes, Amen. So that that's a plan. A plan is always written down. Hallelujah. So when God says, I know, that's why I didn't like the, the thoughts part. Because God wasn't saying, I just have thoughts concerning you. He says, I have a plan for you. I have something that is definite that I have written down concerning your life. Amen. Amen. So God has a plan for us. In, it is written down in the heavens. Number one, for a person to write a plan for your life, it means they care about you. Hallelujah. So God is very interested in your life. Amen. And that's why he took the time to write down this plan. Right? Then he says, plans to what? To prosper you. So the plan of God, the center of it all is to prosper you. Yep. Amen. The plan of God, the center of it all is to what? Prosper you. In the end, God wants to see you what? Prosper. It's the mind of God. It's very important when you deal with God, you understand his characteristic. There are characteristics of God, like love. The Bible says God is love. You can never engage God outside of his love. Even when he is judged, he is judged because he is love. Love is the center of all that he does. Amen? The Bible says God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. So one of the aspects of God, characteristics of God, is that he wants his people to prosper. Amen. The plan he wrote down will prosper you, but it may not be comfortable. Mm. Uh. Kiri, the plan he has for you will what? Prosper you, but it may not be comfortable in the beginning. Let's read. He says, declares the Lord plans to prosper you, not to what? Harm you. Why would he say not to harm you? It's like what he said to Joshua. He says, Joshua, be strong. Why do you tell a person be strong if nothing is coming? When God says be strong, he's saying something that he's not saying. Like, arise, shine. We say we are rising, we are shining. You can only arise and shine. The beauty of light is during darkness. Hello? The beauty of what? Light is during what? Darkness. So it's only when it's darkest that light will be appreciated. So God tells you to arise because it's about to get dark. So don't play the darkness away. Uh, hello. Don't play the what? The darkness away. Because when the, if the darkness is gone, you won't appreciate the light. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Now, he, now, I said all of that to say this. He says, he says, not to harm you. If he's saying that, it means there's going to be uncomfortability in that plan. In the end, you will prosper. But somewhere along the line, there's going to be uncomfortability. And that's why he tells you, it is not to what? To harm you. Now, you look at the man, Joseph, right? Joseph didn't pray to God and say, oh God, make me a prime minister. Did he say that? He didn't, right? I mean, the man was a second last born and he was enjoying his life as second last born. And all of a sudden, it is God who starts this thing. He shows him a dream and he shows him that he, his, his parents and his father were, and his brothers were bowing down to him. He shows him this great dream, right? And then what else does he give him? He gives him what? Favor. He gives him what? Amen. Did you notice ne, that Joseph was hated not because of anything he did, but because of the favor of God in his life? Yep. It's, a, it's a bittersweet experience of favor. That when it truly rests on your life, it will bring contentions with men. Little yeah. huh? <laughs> To be liked is also to be disliked. Yeah. Hello? Amen. The man who experiences faith, it's like God raising you. You're like, God, uh, raise me to the highest position in this country. Do you know what that means? You, it means so, how many people are praying for that position as well? And the minute God puts you in that position, it means you're going to be opposed. So, you must pray understanding that opposition is coming to that as well. Yeah. So, favor by itself attracts attacks yeah. from those close to you. Yeah. Hello? From 
from those close to you who are not built in character. Let me put it that way. Yeah. No. It's going to attract what? Attacks, dislike from those close to you. Right? It, 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 you know what it means to be blessed? Now check the Greek. The Greek says blessed. When it talks about being blessed, it speaks to be envied. So there's a level of jealousy that the blessing of God attracts to your life. And jealousy, can somebody be jealous over you in a nice way? No. Except for God. Amen? Amen. So, the heart of the plan of God is to prosper you. But, in the midst of it, there will be challenges. And that's why God says, it is not to harm you. Meaning, when this plan was drawn up, there was nothing about it that was to destroy you. Right? And you look at the life of Joseph. He starts by having this dream right from God and after he has it what happens problems start the problems start because of the dream he has from God hello after that what happens he lands in the pit after being in the pit where does he go he goes to a uh, uh, Potiphar's house right and in Potiphar's house he stands for God right he decides that he's not going to lie with this woman he's going to run away he walks in integrity when he does that it attracts more what more now, here's what I'm trying to show you, children of God, right? We think that when you stand for God, immediately blessing just comes. There's no such. The Bible says those who live godly will suffer persecution. Meaning to stand for God also means that you are attracting a certain level of opposition. But when it was all said and done, and again, you know, read about Joseph. After he stands for God, then he lands in prison. Now he's in prison for standing for God. He got to Potiphar's house because he stood for God. Now he's in prison because he what? He stood for God. Then he helps these guys, right? He helps these guys. After that, they forget him for three years. I mean, I mean, I mean. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Your neighbor. You are not the first to be forgotten. Have you ever been forgotten? Yeah. Where someone you knew and you helped advanced and you're like, you're waiting for that phone call. And it's not coming. You know, they, they, you're like, hello to, you know, and he, he, they, they, they have forgotten. You're like, but this person, when they had nothing, I was the one who was taking care of them. I was helping them. I was dressing them. Now that they are somebody, huh? can phone them, I'll, hey, listen, I'll call you back just now, now. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph was there. Hallelujah. This is serious, right? It's serious. He was forgotten for three years. My God. My God. <laughs> so that he would not depend on his own strengths and planning. Yes. After three years, Joseph probably, actually, after the first six months, he gave up or those guys will remember him. Anger. So now he was left once again to the mercy of God. And it would take the hand of God talking to Pharaoh for him to be able to get out of that and come into a place of influence and affluence to become prime minister. But look at what happened. When he starts, there is nothing. When he starts, things are okay. When he ends, it's glorious. But in the middle, it's an entire mess. That, children of God, is the plan of God. Lisha, I'm telling you the truth. Baba and Chibakasu boots, you know. But that is the honest plan of God. It starts out, you know. Some people were okay until they got a prophecy. <laughs> Have you ever been there? Like you were okay until you got a prophetic word. Now, since the prophetic word is like beating after beating, attack after attack, you're not the first. Hallelujah. Here's David. David is doing a great job. He's enjoying his father's house, right? He's, he's, he's rejected already. So he's comfortable with the rejection, right? When, when they call a party, he's not part of those invited. That's painful, my God. Imagine right? your family is hosting a party and you are the one person they are saying, I was cut, like, continue working. That, that was David's situation, right? And the prophet comes in and he says, God hasn't chosen any of you. And he calls David. He anoints David. When he anoints David, you would think 
think after that life would be glorious but from that day on trouble just followed David and you know how long it followed him for 14 years from the time of his anointing to the time of his coronation to becoming king of all Israel it's around 13 to 14 years and you look at that there was betrayal the person that he was helping he was helping Saul to defeat uh, uh, Goliath all of a sudden it's Saul trying to kill him do you see what's going on it's the plan of God amen, amen. now do you get why he says it's not to harm you <laughs> like you can see Zana. there's a reason why he adds that then he says plans to give you what hope and a what and a future the 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 there's a version that says an expectant end amen then he says something right then can we read it together one two three go yeah yeah i will listen to you yeah next verse When you seek me with all your what? Your heart. Now, that plan of God, right? You must seek it with all of your heart. As, as, as much as it can bring attacks and all of this, it's the reason why you were born. Amen? And so it's very important that you know it. Here's what understanding the plan of God does. It gives you fortitude during trouble. Yeah. Uh? Yeah. Now, normally in christ you have two types of destiny people né? so they are christians né? who choose just to be christians né? and may you not be that person né? there are people who just say i'm saved i'm going to heaven that's it but i live my life the way i want to you know there are christians like that right we are not talking about those today amen we are talking about two types of destiny people right there is a person who's called by god uh, both of them are called by God. They know. And when I say called by God, ne, I don't mean fivefold. Ne? I don't mean preacher. Because every time we hear the word calling, we think a fivefold. We think stage. <laughs> Hello. Every time we hear called by God, we think ah, you are born for the pulpit. No, it's got nothing to do with the pulpit. There are callings in politics. Hallelujah. There are callings in accounting, in economy. Hallelujah. When you look at Joseph, he's an economist because he saved an entire nation from perishing economically. Yeah. Amen. Did you see Joseph preaching? Did you see Joseph laying hands? He never does any of those things. Yet he's in the Bible and you read about him. He was not a preacher. He was an economist. Hello? So when I talk about being called by God, I don't mean fivefold. The callings of God are vast. And in this series, we're going to explore as many as is possible. Right? Now, you, both of these people are called by God. One is called, but does not take time to understand the details of their calling and another one is called and understands the details of their calling now here's the thing both of them are going to are going to experience blessings and challenges as a result of the calling but the one who will stand is the one who has the details of the calling that rather than the one who does not have details and i'll show you right look at paul when god calls him he says, I've called you to be a witness. Then he says, you will suffer many things for my name. Oh. So when Paul gets beaten, he, he's not shocked and feels like God has left me. Yeah. Hello, Bazalwan. I'm, I'm doing this so that when a lot of you, you are in destiny, right? You're walking in destiny, right? I was, I was sharing with the church in the morning. I said, you know, this year, you know, we, we, we are dealing with a lot of warfare. There's a lot of from the enemy and it's okay it's normal hallelujah it's part of you know it's what we signed up for right and where we where, where i'm like by god we are about to end you know where i'm like i'm sure i'm you know i'm dead sure not dead sure living sure right i am living sure that it's about to end my spiritual father comes and gives a prophetic word he says hey there's more trouble coming come on he, he says there's more trouble coming he says but at the end of the trouble he says there will be great glory so when I walk into that trouble I don't feel like Lord what am I doing wrong maybe I'm not praying enough maybe I'm not no I understand I was told 
Because a lot of you, right? This is part of the journey. It's part of the journey. But because you don't understand the details of the call, what do you do? You are praying things that are for your destiny. I hate Lord Jesus. You're like Jesus who's praying away the crucifixion. How else will you become king of kings and lord of lords if you don't go through that? And that's why you must under and equally again, equally, ne? it's important that you understand the details of your 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 calling and your assignment so that there are things that are not God. It's not me. Here is not me. Here is not me. I'm not the one who's troubling you. This is not part of your destiny. You will accept things that God wanted to remove from your life. So it is in your best interest to find that plan. Amen. So that you understand the phases of your life. Are we, am I going through this because of destiny? Or am I going through this because Satan himself is just being the devil? Amen. Am I helping somebody? All right. He says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Now, very important. No? I'm still laying a foundation. The plan of God. Okay, maybe let's write this down. Write down purpose. Right? Write down purpose. Purpose. Purpose is the reason for which something is done or created. Purpose is the reason for which something is done or created. Did you write that down? The reason for which something is done or created. Then, number two, it is the reason why something exists. Something or someone exists. That's purpose. Right? Did you write that down? Alright. Then write down destiny. Destiny. Because there's a difference, right? Destiny is the particular state of a person or thing in the future. Destiny is the particular state of a person or a thing in the future. Then put a comma after future. No? Destiny is the particular state of a person or thing in the future. Resulting after that comma, ne? Ki resulting from earlier events and decisions. Put decisions in capital letters. <laughs> Amen. Decisions in what? Capital letters. Capitalize it. Highlight it like mark it. Because write this down. Right? Decisions decide destiny. Decisions decide destiny. Not God. Decisions decide destiny. Amen. Amen. Now, let's open a few scriptures and then I, I just want to illustrate something. Ne? Your, 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 okay. Psalm, Psalm 139. Psalm 139 verse... Verse 13. Psalm 139 verse 13. Right? Let's read. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Right? I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Next verse. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Next verse. Right? Let's read this together. One, two, three, go. Go we are? All the days of the day. He says, the days, right, ordained for me were written in your book before.
before any one of them happened so the days of your life your life did not was not the earth may have been shocked by your coming your parents may have been shocked by your coming your relatives and surrounding may have been shocked by your coming but god was not shocked by your coming amen in jeremiah you'll read it read it at home uh, 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 one verse six god says to jeremiah before i formed you in the belly i knew you right then he says then he says i set you apart that word set apart means i marked you i marked you i put something on you that would distinguish you and you know it is that mark that causes people it or, or let me put it this way it's that mark that causes you not to fit into certain groups i was showing this in the morning that you know when i was in high school i tried to fit in with almost every single group i went to the gangsters to try to fit in it didn't work i went to the cool guys because they are the gangsters then they are the cool guys right and i tried to fit in there it didn't work then i went to the nobodies you know there are nobodies in high school right i went to the nobodies i no more again i i can say no more you know i i i i I went around so many circles right and all those people i call them friends right and the surprising thing is today when i get on facebook i'm like but this guy was my friend in high school when did we stop being friends did you ever think about that that you you cancelled friendships unknowingly but the thing that marks you and distinguish you the one who marked you and distinguish you was god he's the one who put that seal on your life and that's why unless you are in a surrounding that can breed the destiny of god for your life you will never fit in hello now last week during the passover i spoke about the spirit of rejection right remember yeah, you remember that there's the spirit of rejection eh? but then there's the rejection that comes by the mark of god yeah. because of that mark there are people who just don't they just don't click with you yeah. and it is so that you can find god that's true yes, some of you god intentionally he put a mark on you where everybody just about you just so that you can find him amen hallelujah Amen. Yeah, it's it's the mark of the Lord. That's why you always felt like you are with these people, but you are different. It's because of that mark. That's true. I was sitting in the morning. I was like, "Can you believe it? I once thought I was going to be a DJ." <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious. I, I, I was serious. You know, it, it was part of you know. my cousin was a dj he's still a dj right? and i was always with him you know and i was like you know this is what i want to do you yeah? <laughs> was that mark i was trying to fit in everywhere <laughs> praise the lord i know but, but you know, like you've been to some places you've been to some places we can go into your archives where you've been the type of people you wanted to fit in with <laughs> <laughs> that thing you know this mark right even in my family i just didn't fit in i didn't fit in with my family and now it's only and you only understand that later on or, or, that's why that's why i wasn't clicking you see that because god knows if you had fitted in you would have never become the person that you are now you are good listeners right if you had fitted in and conformed so that mark refuses that you conform people will just push you away they don't understand why they are pushing you away it's because of the mark of god on your forehead are you hearing me so he says before i formed you in the belly i knew you he says i i set you apart you know in in ephesians chapter 1 i believe it's verse 3 4 and 5 he says i chose you were chosen in christ before the foundation of the world to be chosen means there was a group and you were handpicked yes, hello you were chosen you you didn't you're not just where you are by choice jesus says you did not choose me but i chose you you didn't choose the lord you didn't you didn't you, who are you to choose jesus you didn't choose him you chose him because he chose you if he had never chosen you you could have never chosen him that's the that, that's the mystery about god we love him because he loves us 
We think, no, we love God and then God is responding. No, you are responding to his love. Yes. Amen. We are chosen before the foundations of the world. Now, here's the thing about choosing. And when I illustrate this, you'll understand. Do you know there are people God chooses, right? And there are people God rejects. <laughs> Honestly, there are people God rejects. And how pain, you know, it's one thing to be rejected by a person. If, if the creator of the universe, the one who is everywhere, rejects you, where then do you go? Right? So, okay. Paul also says in Galatians, right? He says, God separated me from my mother's womb. Right? So, your purpose was not decided the day you came to the earth. It was decided long ago. Okay, do you see this? Now, he says, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before any of them. So there's a book where this is written, right? Now, it's, it's in your best interest that you find out what's written in this book. It does not mean you will have a vision of a book and then you will read. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But what the Holy Spirit will tell you is from that book. Amen. Right? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 6. Hebrews chapter 10. Just hold on. I want to make sure from here that... Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 10. Uh -huh. Verse 7, sorry. It's verse 7. Can we read this? 1, 2, 3, go. Amen. Yeah, it's written about me in the what in the scroll now a scroll is a book amen so if you read it with the king james it says it's written of me in the book right he says here i am it is written about me in the scroll i have come to do your will my god now this was jesus when jesus came he lived according to that book he lived his life according to what was written concerning him. Amen. Let's look at Mark. Mark, Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. And we are looking at verse 35. Verse 35. Verse 35. Look at this. Oh, oh. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed, right? Simon and his companions went to look for him, right? And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you, right? Notice what Jesus says. Can we read this together? One, two, three, go. Jesus yeah. Else. Yeah. 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 Give me uh, uh, New King James. Give me New King James with this verse. Mm -hmm. New King James. All right. One, two, three, go. Yeah. 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 He says, for what? This purpose I have. So he had a sense of purpose. And in his purpose, you see the clarity of understanding because here's how you know a person understands their purpose properly, right? They get the good and the bad. Anybody who's just telling you the good, is not, he doesn't understand their purpose. Anybody who just tells you the bad, is just, no, is in the wrong as well. Purpose gives you clarity of the good and the bad the blessings of God and the challenges that will come with the journey you will notice it every time God calls men he will tell them that I have called you for this but this is what will challenge you hallelujah so when you truly find out your destiny God will tell you the things that you are to do right and the blessings thereof but he will also tell you the the hurdles and the difficulties that you will face ahead so that when you face them you face them with a sense of strength hallelujah 
Hallelujah. The Bible says Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So he knew that the cross was part of his journey. Amen. Look at Paul. Paul gets stoned. After he's stoned, he gets up, right? And then he encourages the believers. He says, hey guys, we must go through many things for the kingdom. I mean, I mean, I need the encouragement. I mean, encourage me. After being so, okay, about Metagarim Pamane, just so that we are clear, they did not slap him. Amen. They didn't what? We think Paul was slapped. No. They stoned him, which means he felt a stone, boom, and he felt another stone, boom, and he felt another stone, boom. And remember, they would, they would use boulders, right, during that time. So you would feel it. And they don't stone you until they are sure you are dead. Yeah. So here's a man. He's beaten until they are sure that he's dead. Then the believers gathered around him. He resurrects, right? After he resurrects, he goes into the city and then he encourages the believers. Mom, oh, sharp. Our guys, listen, we must go through many things for the kingdom of God. Is that not a person with a sense of purpose? He understands his journey. Languages, is all right? And so when you get, when you understand your purpose, you will not cry about certain troubles. Hallelujah. You will, you will, you will feel them. Then you, you will feel them, trust. You will feel them, right? But you will be able to, you will have a fortitude. Yes, Praise the Lord. Amen. Think about it. When you are studying medicine, if you are studying medicine, do you, or, or you are studying law, you are studying law. When, when they give you a lot of books, do you get, why, can, why do they give us so much books? Why do they give us more books than the other guys? We are always really, uh, it's part of the journey. Hello? The, 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 the journey for the lawyer and the journey for the HR person is two different journeys. But praise the Lord. And sometimes you ask, because you are Lord, because of the glory, you're going to have more challenges than the usual person. Let right. Is it is it purpose and destiny? Amen. Now let's let's look at I, I, I want to wrap it up. I think that's enough, ne? You've eaten. Ne? Amen. <laughs> Thank you for the honesty. Right? Now, let's look at, let's look at, let's look at destiny, right? And purpose, the difference, right? Pastor T, uh, Prophet, Pastor Jeff, Mabuza, come. All right. Um, All right. Okay, Pastor T will be God. (laughs) Stand up there between these two speakers, right? He's God. Right, this is Mabuza. Right, we are dealing with Mabuza's purpose and destiny. Right, and then come prophet. Um, st- uh, stand at the top next to that speaker. Right, can I have one more person? Dumelo, can you just come? Right, Pastor Jeff Sore now for this example. <laughs> um, right, just stand there in the middle. So there is purpose and there is what? Purpose and what? Purpose is the reason for which you came. Right? Decided from the heavens long before your conception in the earth. Right? Now God created you. Your purpose can never change. Your purpose will never change. But your destiny can change. Amen? Your purpose can never change. But your destiny can change. Amen? Now, God decides from eternity that I have called him to be a president in South Africa. Right? <laughs> I have called him to be a president in South Africa. And his presidency, let's, let's, let's create a scenario where South Africa is like Nigeria. Nigeria, you know, is, a Christ, is not a Christian nation. It's actually a Muslim nation. Right? With all the revival that they have, it's actually a, a Muslim nation. It's shocking, right? Yeah, it's very shocking. It's the biggest churching nation, right? But there are more Muslims than there are Christians, right? And even the president, uh, the guy who was elected now, was, is Muslim. The previous president was also Muslim, right? Now, let's say South Africa is like Nigeria, right? And God, he, 
Mabuza's purpose is to become president. And that's his purpose, right? And in his destiny, right, he becomes the president of South Africa to liberate South Africa from being a Muslim nation to being a Christian nation. That is God's plan for his life. Here, right? This is God's plan for what? His life, right? Then we have an instance where this is... Okay, first let's start here. Let's start here. This is the enemy's plan for his life. The enemy's plan for his life does not deter from purpose. Huh? Is that yes, he will be president, but he will he will now bring Niger uh, South Africa to a place where there are no Christians that are allowed to practice. Same person. God has a destiny for him. Satan has a destiny for him. But what decides whether or not he will arrive here is his decisions. Hello. Now, let's take this as the final end. This will be the final end, right? As per his decisions. It could be half of this or half of that. Or it could be all of this, right? Or all of that. All of this will be determined by his decisions in the earth. So he's born into the earth. And as he's born, you know, he's born. Let's say, and it doesn't matter where you are born, right? It doesn't matter where you are born. He's born and he grows up. As he grows up, he likes, he likes debates. You know, he likes debates. He's always in debates. He's always, you know, arguing with people, right? He, he fights against injustice when he's in high school, right? What is that? It's that purpose of his life. Because your desires, your, your passions are in line with purpose, right? And in high school, he's now... You know, he's, he's part of the SRC, SRC, I guess again, right? Uh, high school, university, he's part of the SRC. You know, he's, he's a, a, a campaigner, right? And let's say he joins Plus Go Action Essay. Who we'll join Action Essay, right? And he's fighting the cause for people, right? But Satan notices him. He sees that thing over his life. He says, okay, I notice you right and suddenly satan does not necessarily attack him right he starts to stir him away right and when he stirs him away he brings around him all the corrupt guys so what is he doing he's gravitating towards satan's plan for his life but there's a person praying for him interceding for him somewhere and that intercession gets to a place where he finally meets the lord and when he meets Jesus Christ, he repents, right? And he says, I will walk the path of God. When he walks the path of God, Satan now attacks him. The purpose of the attack is to push him back to this place where he's walking in Satan's plan for his life. Do you notice it? Satan attacks so that you would succumb to his plans. Don't you notice a lot of people when it comes to, to being disangoba? What does he do? He frustrates their life so that then they say, You have a calling. You are called as a prophet, right? But he sees it. So what does he do? He frustrates your life. So now he's frustrated. He's frustrated. And now finally he's working with these guys. When he walks with these guys, everything opens up. Everything is okay. And it's like, but tabernacle of prayer, things were not working well. Now that I'm with these gangsters, things are okay. You don't realize you are in his camp. That's why things are okay. You get attacked because you are on the right path. Yep. So now Mabuza, he walks in this journey. But so let's say this. Beyond this offering basket, there is a place, Bazalwane, called No Return. Ne? This place, No Return, all right? When, you, it, 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 when you've made certain decisions up to a certain point, you will continue living, right? But it's going to be very difficult for you to live up to the purpose of God. At best, you get saved, you die. To secure your salvation so that you don't go to hell. 
so Mamuza's decisions okay right before that place it seems like he's back with God again but Satan mounts up the pressure now he's being investigated now this is happening now this is happening now this is happening. it's like since I, since I became I'm walking with God now there's more trouble the trouble is not coming because you did any it's because of what you are going to fulfill are you understanding me so Mabuza then makes decisions and unfortunately he ends up yielding and now he has yielded to these guys to a place of what no return when he yields to a place of no return he becomes president purpose he does because that's how God built him but he's doing it for Satan now he's staring South Africa in a different journey Mr. Elias come then God looks for another man South Africa is under a painful leader who is Mabuza but Mabuza was called of God he had a destiny of God upon his life right but he made wrong decisions so now he's the, the nation is in a different state but God has a prophetic word over the nation can I have can I have like a jacket right yeah this is the mantle of the president who will deliver South Africa it rested upon Mabuza right but Mabuza didn't fulfill that he didn't walk he didn't make proper decision so yes he's president but without the mantle right now God now the mantle is hanging in the atmosphere it's waiting for the right vessel and so God finds Mr. Elias and when he finds Mr. Elias same scenario same scenario same scenario same scenario same scenario and God tries to find this man in high school preach guys preach to him he gets into a proper church he tries to groom him but Satan has pressure because of the destiny of the nation pressurizes him pressurizes him when he gets to a certain point boom he fails like Mabuza again president it's the second president come come sir it's the third one now god is still the mantle is still hanging in the atmosphere it's looking for the right vessel who will do and execute the purposes of god and god looks again he looks again purpose right and here you're looking at you're looking at many years right purpose again and god now with this one because those first two were now let's say those first two had the mantle right but when they got to the place of no return god took back the mantle all right because they are more dangerous there with that mantle so with him right let's say all of them god gave them the mantle when they got here right but then when he got when they got there he took it away so with him god waits longer god subjects him to a heavy training now he's more stricter than ever before because now south africa if it doesn't if he doesn't deliver south africa they may not arise another leader and so the eternal destiny of the nation may be lost so now what's about to happen to South Africa lingers on this man's shoulders. So what does God do? He's difficult on him. He makes sure that he, he gives him people around him who don't allow him to fall. And even when he's walking, the pressure is difficult, but he's continuing. Amen. The difference, right? Sorry guys, no, it's just an example, right? The difference with him, right? Then you know what God does. Né? This is what it, it, it's strange, right? These guys né, had the charisma for the presidency. He doesn't. In fact, he does not look like he'll become president. He's not presidential material. What is God doing? He's hiding the gifts. He's shielding him from Satan until the appointed time. Are you getting this? Yeah. 
So, in his mercy, this guy just looks like an ordinary guy. Okay, what's a local ball? You know, ANC, Action SA. But he's like that guy. You know, he's like that guy. You know, ah, that guy. Come, that guy is actually the one. Did you notice with David, his brothers looked kingly, but he didn't look kingly. What was God doing? He was shielding him. He was shielding him for a purpose. Study David's brother, his, 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 his first brother. He looked like Saul. He was king material. That's what the prophet said. Behold, the Lord's anointed. And so with him, God hides his destiny. And he subjects him. He grooms him like he's grooming a pastor. But he's not a pastor. So he's praying like pastors. In fact, all his friends are pastors. He's the only one who's actually not a pastor. He's a president. God is hiding the gift. And eventually, when God sees, just move back a bit. When God sees that he hits the place of no return, suddenly, because it's a place of no return, suddenly God releases the mantle on him. When he releases the mantle, he knows now the mantle is safe with him. That's why God said this. He says, I have found David, a man after my own heart. Do you know, you must study, man, when God told Samuel that I have provided for myself a king after my own heart, David was not born. That means any man could have been that person after God's own heart. When David came, he fulfilled the demands. His calling was just to be a man after God's heart. His calling from inception was not kingly. It's just a man after God's own heart. God was just looking for that. A man after my heart. I'm not looking for a president now. I'm looking for a man after my heart. When God discovered that David is a man after his heart, he says, now the oil can rest. Knowing that the oil, the challenges will still come, the difficulties will still come, but this one has crossed the point of no return. He will fulfill the plan of God. And now when he arrives, God, 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 he fulfills the full destiny. He arrives, he made decisions from here till here. All of them started at the same place. They had the same purpose. But it was the decisions that determined ultimately who they become. It's the same with all of you here. God has a purpose for your life. But God also has a destiny and Satan has a destiny for your life. The destiny that you will fulfill is dependent on the decisions that you make. Amen. What decisions are you making? Every, de every decision is either a step towards God or step towards Satan's direction. And some of you, because God does not have another, he will subject you to a different type of training. It will be like things are more difficult for you. It's not because of you, it's because of the nation. There's an entire generation that will be lost to God if God misses it with you. And so God does not play games with you. He puts you under strict instruction until the time that you pass the no return point. When you pass that place, he releases the oil, the resources, he releases everything because now you can be trusted. Can we stand up in the presence of God? Thank you, gentlemen. Lift your hands towards heaven and begin to pray. God, help me make right decisions that are in line with your destiny for my life. Some of you need to pray. God, reveal your destiny. Upon my life. Reveal your purpose for my life. Come on, begin to pray. Begin to cry out for that prayer. Show me God. Show me God. Show me God. Show me God. Show me your plan for my life. Zalakatala Kabaria. Mashanta Libra Katoya. Eparaskatala Matala Katora Kabaya. Ishatale.
a babaya kapora, a labra kataya. There is a high calling in this room. A shaka kapari a kaposka, a labra kaposka bara kataya, labra kataya. Shelato kapara kataya. Come on, pray. Yala kora kabala kasovla dili bahaskata. Rata kaza la barakata la kabaria. Show me what has been written in the books of old. Alata kabara kasovla kataya. Open my eyes. Lebra kataya kashala kabaya. To where you brought me to this earth. Lebra shete kebere kataya. Ebrata kasora kataya laba. Reto sele eba. Ebrata sala kapora. Akatela, Isaya, Shaka, Eyata Kalaya, Rakoska Parakatoya, Ilatea, Shatanea, Amanda Sopra Catalia, Ibe, 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 Sora Cataya, Sora Cataya Catoria, Yatora Bahasata, Labra Catalabaha, Ayata.